So it's Fashion Revolution Week and it's time for us to show our power collectively as consumer activists and citizens, not just consumers, to hold brands accountable, to hold the fashion industry accountable, not just to transparency, but to traceability to their past commitments and to real change. Because I'm tired of things not changing. And if you don't know, the Fashion Revolution campaign started eight years ago, okay, eight years ago in 2013, um, when the Rana Plaza incident happened, a building collapsed in Bangladesh and it took that incident for us in the global north to start realizing that these people are being exploited working in really hazardous dangerous environments where they risk their lives every day for us to get cheap mass-produced fast fashion. Fast forward eight years to today it's 2021 and garment workers are still being treated like sh and nothing has changed. The latest reported incident in Bangladesh took place March 8th, 2021. That was maybe a month ago. So these things are still happening. They're just not happening at as large of a scale, but I've asked this before, and why does it take a major incident to happen for us to care? We should care no matter what. Our workers are still reporting poor lighting, poor ventilation. A lot of them keep fainting and don't get me started on the sexual abuse that happens. So to remind you, 80% of the garment worker labor force is women and they're usually women of color. And it's usually men who are in these, you know, higher up positions, the managers and the amount of sexual abuse of rape that continues to happen just shows, it goes to show how little has changed. And a lot of brands at the start of the pandemic, they canceled their orders, right? Which led to these garment workers being um, laid off with no jobs. Garment workers globally are owed between 500 to 800 million dollars in severance pay. A lot of these brands have stepped up and are committed to paying back, but a lot of brands still haven't. Like I'm looking at all of you who still buy from Urban Outfitters and Anthropology specifically because what pisses me off even more is that these brands all made like millions and billions of dollars since the pandemic started. It's not like they don't have money to pay these garment workers. This is just pure exploitation. And there's so much more tea, but I'm just gonna include links below to the forced labor happening in Uyghur with cotton and the Myanmar military coups and people dying and there being literally like protests there. And that's just the ethics piece. Don't get me started on the sustainability side, but we all know, I've talked about this a ton on this channel, the fashion industry is so wasteful and it's killing our environment with the way that we currently produce, the way that the supply chains are currently, you know, built. But in terms of water usage, deforestation, textile waste, carbon emissions, fossil fuel use. The fashion industry produces 20% of global wastewater, 10% of global carbon emissions, and it might be more because as we know, since the industry is so large, so unregulated, um, these stats probably aren't accurate, but they give a good baseline measure, but I'm going to assume, and it's good to assume that they're much higher than this. And 85% of clothes produced annually are landfilled every single year. So I just made a video on fashion waste. Highly recommend you check that out to learn more. 70 million trees are cut down yearly. Okay, so this is contributing to deforestation to make clothes. And that's the rayon modal uh, viscous fabrics that are made out of wood pulp. And 70 million barrels of oil are used to make polyester yearly. I had to move you guys down because my legs are falling asleep, but let's keep going. The fashion industry also uses 1.5 trillion liters of water every single year. 23% of the chemicals produced worldwide are used by the fashion industry. That's a lot of chemicals. So those are just a few facts to put this all into perspective, but it's no secret that the fashion industry continues to thrive off of exploiting both humans, garment workers, and our earth, our environment, our ecosystems. I get questions all the time asking, you know, what can we ask brands about their sustainability and ethics, how? So I'm going to share some quick questions and messages that you can literally copy and paste, send in their DMs, comments on their Instagram photos, send us emails, leave in product reviews, so that we can all pressure brands 
to actually change because I'm tired of this, all right? I wanted to share it this week specifically because though we should be asking these questions all year round from brands that we've supported in the past to brands that we want to support in the future, I want to stress the importance of asking this week specifically. If you're going to ask one time in this entire year, it should be this week specifically because this is a revolution, a campaign that's organized globally. And it's when the most of us are going to be using our voices to pressure brands to change. So I hope that, you know, if it's the one thing you're going to do this whole year to just push brands a little, you know, to be more ethical, to be more sustainable, please do it this week. And the other thing I want to stress is you can ask any brand these questions. No brand in the fashion industry is safe from this, no matter how ethical or sustainable they claim to be. But... It's also important to put the most pressure on the giants, on the evilest fast fashion corporations in the industry, like the Zara's, H&M's of the world, because they are the ones who have benefited and profited the most. I think anybody can participate and that's the beauty of this, you know? You don't need to fit into a certain like type of person. You don't have to claim to be a sustainability advocate. You don't have to claim to be living a zero waste life to care about this and to participate in pressuring brands to do better. Everybody can and it's free to. It takes like one second, one minute of your day. You can do it laying in bed when you're waking up and you scroll through your phone like me mindlessly for two hours or before you go to bed. Literally anytime. It's so, so easy. All of us, most of us, have access to the internet. So I'm riled up. I hope that this video can help get you riled up too. A lot of you ask, oh, like I don't have the resources to buy from these brands or oh, like this is preventing me from, you know, supporting sustainability-minded brands. But it's also not about what you buy. It's about our mindsets. It's about what we're doing behind the scenes too. Again, I wanna stress, sustainability, whether it's in fashion, in your lifestyle, in the foods that you eat and make, is about what you can do, what you can learn, how you can empower, how you can contribute to progress. It's not about the brands that you buy into. And I want to just, you know, remind all of us of that because sometimes I hear that, oh, like, I wish I could buy from all these sustainable brands, but sustainability is really about not buying anything and making the most of what you have. So, all right, I'm going to try to cut off my rant there, but let's start off with the questions that you can ask brands. Here are the basic questions that you can ask, like the who made my clothes, who made my fabrics, what's in my clothes, which are all really important. But if you want to take it one step further, I also have these specific questions that I like to ask when I start getting into the nitty gritty. So a few are how much unsold inventory did you have last year? Where did it go? Have you changed the sizes of your production runs this year to accommodate and not use as many resources? You owe severance pay to your garment workers right now. Check out this list again. And another question I think we should ask to the brands that have their conscious collections, their sustainable lines that make up like 1% of all the clothing that they produce is love your you know conscious line like i like to start it off with something positive um like love that you use these materials in these clothes but i noticed that you know this collection only has seven out of the eight thousand products that are currently on your website can you share your plan to make you know most of your clothes out of these fabrics because you obviously have access to them it's all about asking for um, commitments that you can actually hold them accountable to. So percentages, dates. Anyway, those are just some examples of questions to ask. But really, if you look at their entire supply chain, you can also look at their sustainability page and just ask more detailed questions about anything that they say on them. And they should have an answer to you that's not just like a one to two line bag BS answer. I'll leave more examples of questions down below, but you can ask so many questions because there are so many layers to this. And the other question I get asked is, oh, where and how can you ask these brands questions? I love before the pandemic, when I was able to go in stores, if the store associates can answer you about the sustainability and ethics of a company, that is a really good sign. When they can't, that's a red flag because it means that they do not care and it's typically BS because it's not included in their training. So it's just funny when you ask people in person because they honestly just spill the tea. They're like, yeah, 
Zara ain't sustainable, I don't know what to tell you. But also we're in the age of being online, being on social media. So the things that I recommend doing that I love doing are one, Instagram is so easy, you're probably already on it. So leaving comments on posts so that other people can see it. Anything public will help keep them accountable versus an email or a DM. But also those are nice too, because we're just, again, trying to put the pressure on them so that they cannot avoid it. And I like to also screenshot the email, screenshot the DM, screenshot the comments in case they delete them. And there are really great email drafts too. So you don't have to like type out a whole email by yourself. I'll leave those linked down below too. The other thing that I love to do is to leave reviews. So hit them where it hurts. Leave product reviews on their site so that other customers who are about to buy a product that's looking for some, you know, feedback, some um, reviews from people who've already bought it, also see your reviews about you know, their sustainability and their ethics, and hopefully that'll help them think about these things and consider these things before they buy them as well. Another thing that's super helpful to do is to sign petitions. I will leave three specific ones below, including the pay up petition. So this one, again, is to just ask brands to pay up. It's not just about paying their workers, it's about sharing their profits, increasing, you know, the wages that they pay. It's a really good one. So I'll leave that linked. The other one is the SB62 Act. This one used to be the SB1399 Act, and this is to protect garment workers in LA specifically. You know when brands are like, oh, we make our clothes in LA, they're made in California. Well, the T is that they can still use a piece rate system where people are paid by piece. And that helps them basically find a loophole in that instead of paying minimum wage, no matter how quickly a worker works no matter how much they produce a lot of the times because it's like 13 cents a piece or whatever they end up making like 200 dollars versus like the 800 dollar minimum wage like this is just a very vague example don't quote me on those numbers I'm just using random numbers as an example and the last one is called the bangladesh accord and this is a binding safety program and it started because of the rana plaza incident when people were calling for better regulations and standards and the important thing about this is that it expires in may 2021 so it might be left to private companies to uphold these standards so it's really important to keep it a thing and lastly i'm gonna leave some accounts below to follow help diversify your instagram feed they're really great at just giving you bits of pieces facts about the fashion industry so that you can learn but it's not as overwhelming as me assigning you like five different research papers and articles <laughs> because who's gonna actually do that three of them that i love are again fashion revolution remake our world and clean clothes campaign those three are the top three that i find good just like one-liner facts about they keep me up to date about what's happening in the fashion industry so it's really good to just follow those. I'll also leave some other accounts that are super educational, like of course, Asha Barber and Rogue Essentials, you know, just good content that is super informative and educative. Because again, I can't stress enough how even though I'm on this channel and trying to create educational videos, what I really hope to do is to empower you and inspire you to also do the same, to read up, to educate yourself and to be a change maker so that we can exponentially reach so many more people and inspire so many more people to care about these things because we should care. It's not just about fashion. It's not just about sustainability and environmentalism. It's not just about, you know, women's rights and feminism and equality. It's also about, you know, racial equality. It's about basically helping the world. With that, this was a very long video, but I hope that it helps. I hope that you enjoyed. Please leave a like if you want more content like this. If you're new here, hi, my name is Cynthia. This is Inspiro. I don't even know if I introduced myself in this video, but please subscribe, hit that notification bell. I don't really know where it is, but it would mean the world to me. Comment down below too, and it would really help this video with the algorithm. I'd also love it if you followed me on Instagram. It's at Inspiro too. That would mean the world to me. I wanna share some of the videos I've made. Just a quick plug because they're great resources and really easy digestible breakdowns to help you learn a bit more about you know the fashion industry and it's going to help you ask questions to brands too so the first one is exposing the fashion industry supply chain this one walks through you know everything that happens in producing a garment another one is how to assess your brand sustainability and this one also again outlines all of the different areas that you should consider and think about and ask about when you are looking to support a brand and i also have this one about greenwashing terms sustainability buzzwords that brands use this is a really good one because brands are getting so good at greenwashing these days 
these these sneaky marketers again please leave a like subscribe hit that notification bell follow me on instagram i know those are a lot of things to do but i would appreciate it because this took me so much time to research and i will see you in my next one <laughs> bye everyone